I'm Jerry, and we are the Military Collectible Shop. Welcome back to another edition of What's New at the Military Collectible Shop. Uh, so thanks to everybody for all of the uh, well wishes for Mark and his wife. He's here. Thank you. That's something. Um, yeah, life goes on. So um, we got some stuff in this week uh, we want to share with you. Not a ton of stuff, but some interesting stuff. Um, and some less than interesting stuff, but just some stuff. So, um, without further ado, because we have to open the shop in a relatively short amount of time. <laughs> yeah, I guess the, we should have started earlier. The best late plans, you know. Okay. Oh. Oh, sorry about that. Uh, uh, this was a. Uh, this is kind of neat. It's a Sykes Fairbane Fairbane Sykes dagger. I suppose they're fighting over who got first credit. A Fairbane Sykes dagger. Um, post war. This one's. But what's neat about this one is it's actually a NATO ma you know, marked NATO uh, made in 1976. So very elegant. Oh, I can't talk. Very elegant commando dagger. Um, you know, and I'm not sure who somebody was fighting in 1976, but probably somebody. Said Bicentennial, we're going back to America, boys. We're always fighting I don't somewhere. Know why I made the British sound Southern then. <laughs> That's your son. All the way back to the, back to the colonies. Well, we have this SA dagger. That's a nice one. Yes, it is. And it's made by uh, Cobra. William Colbert. Um, yeah, you know, And you know, one of the things you want to make sure of when you buy a dagger is that the scabbard fits tight against the cross guard because all the makers are slightly different. And if the scabbard's been replaced, you'll see like a gap in the center or a gap on the edges. You know, you want to check that out if you, if you want a complete dagger. And this is. This one's really nice. Yeah. Also, okay. when you're looking at these daggers, the Germans always soldered the ring on the dagger. You know, if, if you find one, the ring is not soldered. Yeah, that one's fake. Yeah. Maybe at least the scabbard is. You know, the dagger could be real, but the scabbard might be replaced. We were just approached for with one, an SS dagger. That uh, it, it, everything else looked really good, but that scabbard ring, you know, mm, you know, so that, that's a red flag, as they say, you know. So you have to. And I know some people will argue, well, what if it was made on a Friday afternoon? Well. Yeah, I suppose it's, it's possible. By Saturday afternoon, that guy would have been in a concentration <laughs> camp. Um, you know. Sorry, but, that wasn't funny. Yeah. Uh, speaking of SS daggers and fake ones, <laughs> what do you mean? I thought this was real. I thought this this honor dagger. Okay, was... then you can pay me for your half of it. <laughs> uh, That's an honor Himmler dagger. Yeah, Himmler inscription, um, RZM marked. Um, yeah, like they put these engraved daggers. Is an RZM dagger. Snowman, stop calling so early. We're not open yet. This is our time, not your time. Our time. Oh. Well, here. Oh. Uh, I suppose I should do something besides complain. Um, it's a uh, German K98 uh, bayonet, um, nicely matching. Uh, nice combat bayonet um, with the frog. And uh, again, the serial numbers match. Always something collectors love to see, you know. Which is ironic because the whole point of, of military made weaponry was that it was interchangeable. Um, but uh, collectors like to see the numbers match everything, so I get it. But this is a nice example. Very happy to get that one. You got this uh, nice little poker set. You know, I guess if you needed to kill two people at once or do a kidney shot on both sides. Or maybe in the neck. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> and then you could steer them around. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure there's a name for this, whatever these types of knives are. Um, you martial artsy people probably know. Um, kind of neat. Um, probably illegal. <laughs> probably. I don't know. Because, you know, it, it could be a concealed weapon. I'm just carrying this stick. This is just a harmless stick. <laughs> yeah. Oh, 
and here you got your cool. This is this is neat, and I'm still researching this one. Um, what I was hoping this was was a Confederate uh, fighting knife. I don't think it is. Um, but what I think it is is a uh, English. Um, hunting sort of slash fighting knife from the 1800s. So a very early knife, very, you know, kind of elegant daggery knife, long blade, um, in a, its original leather scabbard and a form fitted, um, kind of a bone handle um, where it's been checkered. Um, unfortunately not, not marked that I could see um, in any way, but a real early, nice early knife. So all the knives came from one place, kind of happy to get those. Um, I also got in, uh, a, those of you who know that I like uh, female stuff, um, what's not to like really? Um, <laughs> but uh, I got a navy uh, wave tunic. Oh, cool. Yeah. I didn't see that one. Missing some of the insignia. Um, but And it's missing a couple buttons, but I've got buttons. And a um, female officer uh, from the probably 80s, 90s, uh, from the 84th Division. They were here um, in Wisconsin, actually Milwaukee was actually the headquarters area. Um, so that's probably where she served, uh, where my brother actually served. Um, cool. So, kind of neat. Again, none of these will fit. Maybe your brother knew her. Maybe my brother knew her. Um, and then uh, lastly, uh, we got in, you can hold it. A World War I group, uh, Purple Heart and Victory Medal uh, and helmet, painted helmet. So we were able to get the discharge paper, um, the the Purple Heart for him being wounded, uh, a couple photos of him, uh, his, his military pay book, um, and we've been able to do some preliminary research on him um, along with the, the unit painted helmet. Um, so yeah, any of these, you know, by themselves would be great to find. Um, so we're especially tickled to be able to get a whole group like that. I mean, sadly, no uniform, um, but you know, uh, getting this part of it is is pretty tough. Um, you know, when when you start to think that this stuff's over a hundred years old already. Oh yeah. You know. But you still have that. Oh yeah. <laughs> There's still something else. <laughs> There's always something else. I mean, we do buy a lot of other stuff that we don't show you because you'll be bored to tears. Um, <laughs> or go, what? Why would they do Why, do they why do would they waste their money on <laughs> Right. Okay, never uh, mind. Yeah. Um, but a World War II uh, U.S. Uh, mountain pack. Um, and while we have a bunch of these already, you know, they're still cool. They were used by the 10th Mountain Division. They were used by 1st Special Service Force guys. Honestly, I don't know why every military collector doesn't buy one of these from us right now. <laughs> Call now. Get your mountain pack. Um, most of them are, you know, 42, 43 dated. I don't think I don't think I've seen one made after 43. Um, but it's a nice, well-designed pack. Hey, watch Stop it. trying to hold my hand. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, I don't know. Anything else? No, not today. Um, so we'll see what today brings. Hopefully, there'll be something really cool that we can share with you later. Um, but we wanted to share this stuff with you now because. Hey, that's what's new at the Military Collectible Shop. So, until next time, I'm Jerry. And I'm Mark. And we, we are the Military, Military Collectible, Collectible Shop. Shop.